something a little different for you this sunny Monday morning. A short weekend trip to the Isle of Wight. First time I've been back since 1970 and the music festival at which, along with a quarter of a million other people, I saw the likes of Jimi Hendrix and James Morrison and The Doors. This time around, my partner and I were fulfilling a Christmas present promised to my recently widowed sister and delayed by Covid. Well, we couldn't have asked for better weather, with Saturday dawning both bright and still for an early morning visit to St Mildred's Church at Whippingham, at the centre of an estate supporting Osborne House and Barton Manor. It's thought the Queen's consort, Prince Albert, had a hand in its design, and she would slip in through a side door for services near the altar to sit in her own side chapel and upon her own pew chair. The Queen's daughter, Princess Beatrice, and her husband are buried there too. Then on to Osborne House, built between 1845 and 1851 as a summer home and rural retreat for the Queen, Prince Albert, and their nine children. The Prince designed the house himself in the style of an Italian Renaissance palazzo. The couple paid for much of the house's furnishings by the sale of the Royal Pavilion at Brighton. The Royal family stayed there for long periods each year, letting photographers and painters make works featuring their family. Good Victorian PR. One of the most famous interior spaces is the Durbar, or courtroom, which was built for state functions, and as she'd been made Empress of India, brought a flavour of that far distant realm and the British Raj into Victoria's home. The Queen commissioned artists to go to India and paint both locals and scenes to hang in the main wing of Osborne House. This section also contains many gifts she received on her golden and diamond jubilees. Below the gardens was a private beach where the Queen kept her own private bathing machine. The interior had a changing room and a plumbed-in WC. Prince Albert died at Windsor in 1861, but the Queen continued to come to Osborne. She passed away here in 1901. English Heritage now managed the house. We drove on for a round the island tour which took us to the Needles, a row of three stacks of chalk at the western extremity. At the furthest point stands the Needles Lighthouse built in 1859. We called in on St Agnes Church in Freshwater Bay which dates from 1908 and is the only thatched church on the island. I'd never seen one like it before. The stone used to build it came from an old derelict farmhouse and the date stone was incorporated into the vestry wall. Further along the military road, we stopped to admire the view, looking out across the English Channel from Shulcombe. Next day, we had a ferry booked for midday, so hurried off to view the Abbey of Our Lady of Quor, home to a small community of Catholic Benedictine monks. The Grade I listed monastic buildings, completed in 1912, are considered some of the most important 20th century religious structures in the UK, constructed of Belgian brick and styled in a combination of French, Byzantine and Moorish architectural elements. Our visit clashed with morning mass, but we were able to walk around the grounds where I spotted my first red squirrel and we were able to watch the piglets fighting for a space along their mother's row of ever-ready teats. Back across the Solent to Southampton in glorious sunshine on one of the car-carrying ships in the Red Funnel fleet. Then the long drive home after an exhausting but fun-packed weekend. <laughs>